Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to some of you and peace out to the rest of you. Hit the share button because the message is more important than the messenger. Okay, here's the deal. Um, I'll try to make this quick. Um, you saw the title. About uh, a little bit after midnight uh, Eastern Time, Tuesday morning, Kevin Samuels was telling men, and remind you, remember, all of us, we should remember, he talks to high value men or he talks to women about high value men, one of the two. And he has a definition for it. Look, listen, um, Mr. Samuels, you told men, your target audience men, that they're not going to be able to rack up these body counts that women have and they're not going to be able to find women with lower body counts. Why do you still propose marriage, sir? Now, many men are not going to travel yet. I understand that. But those who can certainly should. And it does get better for them. Men don't have to, I mean, they, they do have to have some money and some income, but they ain't got to really be loaded to go every place they might go. So I'm going to tell y'all, I'm going to tell you and I'm going to tell others straight. Medium value men. And my value is lowering as I get older. But medium value men, which still includes me, still, and maybe another two years, don't have an incentive to get married legally in front of the system. Unless we're going to go somewhere else where we're not going to be in their jurisdiction. We don't have a reason to do that. To stay in the West, build our value up, even to a medium uh, level, Offer this and the benefits of this productivity to a lady and she got a higher body count than us. Here's why. Number one, she has a higher body count than us. Number two, she's not going to respect us when she realizes she has a higher body count than we do. She's going to look and she's not going to say, well, it's always been easy for me because I'm a woman. Even though they know that that's the case, they're not going to apply that to uh, uh, the valid excuse on our behalf that it is. They're instead going to sit up and say, yeah, um, I, I have more experience than he does. He's not a man. I'll just drop him and get one of these other guys that seems to have a higher body count than me. Now, of course, when they do that, then they find out those men ain't going to commit. And not even all of those men uh, that they want are going to give them a chance because some of those men are committed and ain't going to cheat. But, of course, they find this out after they done already cut off the man they should not have. And as if they're willing to get with him and stay with him in the first place. These men are setting themselves up to be used. Now, if a woman wants to avail herself of a man's resources and she really ain't feeling them like that, but she's willing to cooperate and submit and play the role and he understands it and is cool with that, I fuck the shuck up. But let's be honest about it. Which is, okay, she can't feel him the same way he can feel her. What's she gonna bring? Okay, at the very least, she can come in with a lower body count. No, nope, they won't even come in with that. And she still ain't going to respect him when she realizes his body counts low. Sir, the men should not be pursuing these ladies and definitely should not be offering marriage, legal marriage in these Western contexts. It's still a raw deal. Mr. Samuels, at least address that. When you're telling these ladies that they're delusional, thank you. You're right for doing so. You Hell, you changed the conversation in the United States by going mainstream with it. But please stop telling these men marriage. Shuck that fit. If moving up in the corporate world requires that they get married, then the corporate world is full of crap for demanding something like that. Now, if a medium value man has no reason to do this, why would a high value man? I'm not going to lie to you. One reason why I would never admit if I became a high value man is because of what's out there for them. If I became a high value man, sir, if I became a high value man, I would lie about it. No, man, I'm, I'm in the middle. I'm doing good. I'm, I'm doing all right. That's what I would do if I became a high value man because I don't want that target on my back. Because that's most of them. For one, if you out here just slanging ding a ling nilly willy, you ain't gonna become too high value too easily. Now, some would say, no, you gotta become high value first, then you can do that. Maybe you could, maybe not, but the point is that 
For one, the fact that a plan has to become high value before he even can do so do such means he has a right to say to the women, you better not have been out here riding that carousel. But you've admitted that they will have done so. So if I was a high value man, all that would be out there ready for me, waiting for me, would be thoughts, sluts, just, you know, women with higher body counts than me. Definitely in the double digits. Probably in the triple at young ages, how they gonna respect me? They're not going to. Now they would look at what I earn and they would say, okay, well, he's not a bum, but you know what? See, they're demanding it all. And they're demanding things that don't come in the same men, but they're still demanding both of these things. What would they do? Get with me, take my resources, pretend to submit, cheat, and then turn around, tell me we pregnant. We're expecting. That's what would happen. Because that's all that's out there. Unless, of course, I became high value. Then I said, I'm not getting with anybody. I'm going to stay by myself. Because now I got too much to lose. I got even more to lose than when I was lower or medium value. Tell the truth, Mr. Samuels. These ladies calling in your show. Already, you already know, I know, and they learn if they didn't know before, they don't deserve marriage. By their own standards, they don't deserve it. Why should high value men sit up here and be looking around for marriage like that's what's out there when the fact is that the women that don't call your show, they also don't go outside much, so chances are they're not going to meet anyone. No one's going to meet them. They're already taken or they're never going to be taken. Now, in your case, Mr. Samuels, you've been helpful and I appreciate that. I'm not here really to really excoriate you because there are some things you're still learning, which you've admitted. Dr. Peterson, you know better, sir. Now, I don't say this out of hatred. I respect your courage. You stood up to the Canadian government and your university and to the public. Of course, I respect that. And you've got a hell of an intellect. You taught me some things. That's why I was so disappointed to hear what you said to Hafiz on the Roommates podcast. You did say, well, notwithstanding any cultural variations, so you covered that base, but you knew you were talking to a largely black audience. He's not multi-generational black American. But his audience is. You knew this. We've been dealing with trauma passed down maternally for a long time. You sat up and told men in general in the West that if they're upset with the way women are as a creature, whether well, women are right, we're wrong. All I'm going to say, Dr. Peterson, is frankly, sir, that's one of the biggest uh, loads of bullshit I've ever heard coming from anybody, let alone an accomplished and experienced psychologist. Sir, the women aren't wrong for liking what they like. Most men don't say that. If they do say it, well, actually, I'm one of those that would say so. But other men don't say that. I'm the one that disrespects their preferences because we don't live in these feather mucking jungles anymore. You can go into jungles and find women that are not looking for these same dark uh, triad traits in men. They don't want the men to be wimps. That's OK. That's fine. Hell, I don't want a woman to be a wimp. But. The point I'm making is that you can go into jungle regions and find women that can actually appreciate a man that is civilized. You got men that go and track through jungles in the Philippines and find sweet women that don't mind these men being kind and not being mean and aggressive to everybody else. They don't want wimps, but they're not. these women are not walking around assuming that a man is a wimp until he kills a lion or something. You fit the guck out of my face with that short bit. Truth be told, there are a lot of women in the continent of Africa I don't respect for that sort of thing. The Maasai used to have this rite of passage you had to kill a lion and become a man. But I'll be honest, any women that supported that, I don't respect them. The F you mean you gotta go out and kill a lion. Lions don't even hunt people like that normally. You just want him to be violent. 
You want some animal stuff. And you sitting up and saying that it's okay for the women to obey animal instincts and childish whims. But we men have to be human and adult to qualify. What the F is this, man? I don't get romantically involved with, nor do I marry children, nor do I do either of those things with animals. And no men should. So why should we give women a pass to behave like either children or animals? To actually be such um, in their behaviors, not genetically, but in their behaviors. And then we still qualify them and validate them to conceive with them. You think the problem in society is men having lower testosterone and less upper body strength and uh, thinner jaw lines and this sort of thing. No, bro. Where did they get that from? You know, the pituitary gland is in the brain. It governs hormonal treatment. I mean, it governs hormone production, but it's attached to the brain. Primitive portions of the brain, but it's attached to the brain. Information reaches an organism and hormone production begins accordingly. When a father dies, the children begin to enter puberty earlier and they complete it earlier and sooner. That's hormone production. How does what happens when they don't know dad is dead? This happens when they realize dad is dead. Do you see? You know about stuff like this better than I do. You probably can correct me on some of these things. How are we going to sit up here and say, well, we got to be human and adult and responsible and um, forget preventing problems. We have to be able to slay the monster. But the women get to be kids and, sh and animals. They get to judge us like animals. How violent is this man? Oh, I don't even want a man. I want a vampire and a werewolf. You've talked about stuff like this. Ultimately, Dr. Jordan Peterson, let me point out something you said. You addressed an audience at least three years ago about Hitler, how evil he was and how he wasn't even afraid of these groups he tried to annihilate like he said he was, but rather he was just plain flat out disgusted by them. There was no hatred. I mean, there was no fear. He just hated them and he was a monster. You told your audience this. I'm not disputing what you say about Hitler, but the thing is, you were talking about his motives. And you said that maybe it was Young who said that if you can't extrapolate somebody's motives and reasons for the actions and you have to look at the results to get a clue as to what their motives were, they were doing it for the results. That's pretty much what you were saying. You don't know why they did it. Then look at the results. That's why they did it. You were telling them this. OK, sir. Let's look at what these ladies have done. Now, you said that women are going to eliminate what maybe 30. I forgot what the number is, but was it 30 percent of men that you said they were going to eliminate? And that they're right for doing so? What happens when the worst 30% of men meet objective standards that the women say they have? Because 30% of men are not out here just saying, well, we're just going to voluntarily eliminate ourselves. We're going to voluntarily become these guys that women don't want. They don't do that. They stumble into this. And now it's more than 30, sir. Yeah. You ain't been in the game since 1980 something whenever, whenever you got married. And I think you've been faithful to your wife, which is why you don't know how bad it is out there. I tip my hat to you for being faithful, but that also means you don't know how things have changed since then firsthand. Unless you read it. Now, you said women want about 15 percent of the men that they visually they like 15 percent of the men they see. OK, well, in another society, that 15 percent may vary from woman to woman. Which men are in the 15% would vary from women to women. And of course, it has to include men that these women know or at least have seen. In the West, sir, it's not. The only difference between one woman's 15% and the other woman's 15% is based on which men one woman knows and the other one doesn't even know it, uh, uh, exist. That's, that's the only difference. In the West, it's the same 15%, sir, that they all want. And they're mad at the other 85% for being normal. And they're mad that they, they can't all split that 15% of men amongst them and, and copy, copy them and duplicate them. That's really what they want to do. They got another 85% and it's the same 85% and they all want to eliminate them. But they'll settle for maybe, um, they settle for maybe the top half of that 85%. 
maybe, as you said, I, th- I don't know if it's 30, but the 30 that they're eliminating, that you said they're eliminating, but now we know it's more than 30 they're eliminating. And you're saying, oh yeah, they're right for doing it unconditionally. Stop and remember this. Number one, they lie about what they want. That's where the real anger in men comes from. You're actually lucky that these young guys, the ones that are now in their 20s, had access to this red pill knowledge and information going back a decade when they were still kids. You're lucky that that's the case, sir. You know why? They're not going to go down the Elliot Rogers route. Elliot Rogers had to be shocked by this information. He was told to expect one thing, and then he saw something completely different. He was, he felt he'd been lied to and deceived, and he snapped. These men ain't going to have a motive to snap because they know from jump that these that this lies. They know the truth. At the same time, they know the lies. Or right after they hear it. They know TV, even women tell them something, but that in reality, women want something much worse. But they know this at a younger age, so now they're like, ah, I ain't no need to snap, I already know what it was. I just planned my life accordingly. You're lucky that's what it is. The society is lucky that's what it is. Let's call it what it is. We have no motive, sir, to even keep making approaches because congruent with the 85% of men being invisible to women, 87% of cold approaches fail. 87%, and that was two years ago according to some dating website study. Mumia Obsidian Ali was the one that uh, told us about that. Shout out to him. So, you know, 87% failure rate is unacceptable in any job. You know this as a professor. Fail 87% of every single one of your classes without your university saying we're elite and that's what we do. And that's how they pride themselves and mark and brand themselves. If they don't do that, fail 87% of your class every single time you teach and see if they don't come knock on your door and ask you what's going on. I can tell you now, I got a classroom I have one, my afternoon class, not one of those students, not one of them can understand a spoken sentence in English, not a solitary effing one. Now, if 87% of them fail, someone's going to come along and change their grades. Now, they won't ask me about it. That's the difference. But someone will come along and change the grades of some of them so that more of them continue on. Because they won't take an 87% failure rate, even when 100% of them deserve to fail. But you think that men need to just man up and walk up and um, uh, and risk what you have said is a very crushing blow. But see, this is not an age anymore like when you were coming up where you could go and approach one woman in one town and nobody knew about it. You go back home, you go in another town nearby, no one knows you got shot down. It's not like that anymore, sir. You do this, they actually will pull out their phone and say, I'm sorry, could you repeat what you said? And record themselves shooting you down because they get a kick out of it and they want everybody to know they did it. And they want you on camera. So every other woman knows because they know that every other woman knows by looking at you whether she was supposed to turn you down or not. It's vicious and nasty, sir. Now, look at the results of this. The results are the reasons why they do it. The only results that are not the reasons why they do this are the results about which they've been complaining. They're not being approached anymore. They didn't want to be according to them, but now they're not getting approached anymore. So they complain about that. Because it's it's lack of options and lack of chances to turn men down. Okay, so that's one thing. That's one reason for which they weren't doing this. Number two, um, they didn't want to have no men they could call to come do all the non-sexual favors in their lives, like fix things you know listen to them vent about other men and stuff like that so they lost that they're complaining about that so that's obviously not one of the reasons for which they've done what they've done but the elimination of men and men even giving up trying well yeah they complain about men giving up but the fact is What bothers them the most is that the men are becoming more and more comfortable being by themselves. 
this is the main thing that they complain about. So they were doing what they were doing so that many men would be uncomfortable without these ladies, sir. And that's pure fucking evil. And you never got to that point. Whether your wife or your daughters are like that or not, doesn't matter. I'm a man married to a good wife and I love my daughters as much as anybody else and they're good girls. But the fact remains that the collective motive for what they were doing really came down to nothing other than making sure that men have a minimum to suffer. Nothing. They just didn't want men to be too happy and they might not have even realized that was their motive. Nothing else. Sir, sir, When were you going to get to that? Because you know that's the case. What you have said shows that you know that's the case. Just like this, um, it's like some guy in Baltimore, a veteran of the armed services of the US sat up and told men that women are wearing masks and that underneath these masks, they're hiding three things. And the three things he mentioned are the same things that not only do women not tolerate in men, but women will over imagine just to make sure that they eliminate the men with them. Even if they eliminate men without them, fears, doubts, and insecurities. Now, you know, if a woman suspects you got any of those things, you're out of the runnings. And they will confuse other things for fears and doubts and insecurities just to eliminate men. But the real thing men are angry about is the, de is the deception of it all. And you wanted to hide that and make it seem like, oh, they're just sore losers. Man, shuck that fit. You know too much to say that that's an honest mistake on your part. You knew what this is. Stop hiding it. Go ahead and tell these men. You've already had a brush uh, with your own mortality. It should have emboldened you that you survived it. You want to waste the chance you got to tell these men what the F you actually know? I'm not a shrink and I could figure this out. And that's why it is that I value um, and respect the good women more and more as I learn more because I realize what they know and what they've been up against. And the threat facing them just for disclosing this sort of stuff. I realize other women want to stab them if they disclose these sort of things. Pink book lessons can't show her face. Crimson Cure has to be careful. She showed her face, put her name out, and I don't know what she does for safety. But I know some women want to hurt her. And my heart goes out to her. Red Femme Diary, she can't show her face or put her name out there. She got a husband, but she knows for the mucking well that he'll get killed standing up for her the minute that lynch mob shows at that door. She don't want to be a widow or dead herself. She knows she can put her voice out there, but she cannot put her name and she cannot put her face up. Forget about me. I don't want people showing up at my parents' door, my brother's door, my children's doors. That's what I'm really worried about. Here I'm safe but I don't want my wife losing her job or something like that. But I'm gonna tell you straight like this, tell you straight away, man, look, you know, and you didn't, tell. at some point you figured this out. Now, whether you put it in words or not, I don't know, but if you really wanted to tell it, you would have found a way to articulate it because articulation is not a problem for you. I learned vocabulary from you and I'm an English teacher. So it's not the potential and the capacity that you are lacking, sir. You want to talk about slaying some dragons? Slay this dragon and tell everybody what the hell their motives really are. Speak out for, if you don't, if you think the men are just intrinsically worthless because that's how you've been trained, even despite your knowledge, then at least do it on behalf of the good women who don't think that you're intrinsically worthless. Tell the truth, blood. Because I, for one, am sick and tired of seeing these men trying to figure this stuff out. One reason they're giving up is because it don't make no fucking mucking sense. They can't even tell anybody what they come to realize half the time. 
and you want to sit up and talk about and they're just giving up they're just giving up yeah but then you want to sit up and say well they're supposed to eliminate you and and use things like how you dress and your education against you and if you dress better and y'all get educated they're still going to find another way to eliminate 30 percent of you but that's your fault because you're a guy no how about telling men you know what since your testosterone levels are lower and lowering anyway go ahead and be choosy weaponize that be choosy be as choosy as they are nothing else is going to teach them stop being so easy quit making approaches you're right for giving up And even then, it's not about teaching them a lesson. By the time they learn these lessons, it's too late for the individual ladies that learned it. It's more so just about men not wasting any further mucking time and energy and resources. That's what really what it's about. How come you never told these men about fasting, Dr. Peterson? You're a shrink. You know what it does. Outside of starvation level fasting, you know that it lowers the men's libido and it raises the women's. That's one reason why we Muslims, who uh, upon whom you don't really look that highly, I, I get it. But, you know, that's one reason why it is that we have a higher chance of keeping our marriages together. Not a guarantee, but we've generally had a higher shot, historically speaking. That's been one of the reasons why those of us who practice the rest of the religion don't find it too difficult to practice chastity. It can be, but it's not always the case because fasting is there as a weapon. And that actually gives the men access to the women's perspective and women get access to the men's because it lowers, like I said, the male libido and raises the woman's. And it's mandatory at least once a year for us. So the women have to know. They got to know what the men go through. Yeah, you've been sleeping on a lot. Actually, you've known a lot and you just haven't told anybody. Because you're sitting up here thinking that your white West is just na naturally superior. No, bro. Technologically so, yeah. But that has as much to do with non-Western people living in it as it does to do with the Western people living in it. Everybody's contributed to the technological advancements of the West. Everyone has. So... Let's call it what it is, really. You just thought that you all's way was better. While it's failing you, you thought you all's way is better. I'm a little bit more sore about, about you than I am about uh, Kevin Samuels because of your education, your potential, your capacity. Sir, you're just going to have to say some things that are going to be unpopular with your wife. And if you have daughters, now I heard you do, with them too. You're just going to have to do that. And you probably already done it. Well, apparently you got to do it some more. In order to actually help men out like you say you would want to do, you're going to have to do it some more. If that's what it is that bothers them, it's because they don't want you to help men out. What men are saying is we're not going to be used anymore, especially non-sexually. Because that's what they got to protect themselves from. They have That's the use from which they must protect themselves. Many women aren't going to use most men sexually ever, even if she wants to, just because it might validate him. And he's so normal. Why should she? So, you know, a lot of men are simply saying, well, we don't have to protect ourselves from being sexually used. Some would mind, some would not. Depends on the guy, but they got to protect themselves from being non-sexually used. And they're saying, shock that fit. And they should. My son's finally picked a trade, thank goodness. His classes um, got moved back, got moved back. You know what he's not gonna do? He, the, the ladies that, that are his friends, he's not gonna tell them that he has this trade. He didn't even tell his sister. Since the apprenticeship is paid, he's told the ladies in his family it's a job because he's not gonna let them come to him. The ones in his family come to him and say, you're gonna do this, 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 and this for free. He knows they'd start off with that. He's like, nah, that's okay. And he loves the women in the family. Now he'll tell my daughters because he knows that I'm not going to let my daughters use and abuse his talent like that just like I wouldn't let him use and abuse any talents or skills they acquire later on. You trade him. Ain't nobody going to use the other one. He knows that. But my own, my son, less than half my age, knows, he knows what he has to do because of how bad it is. And you knew better than him or me before we knew how bad it was and you've actually kept some of that a secret. 
So my question is, who's paying you, sir? And how is it um, that they can convince you because you ain't a coward, you stood up to the Canadian government for what you believe in. And they can't deceive you, at least not that easily, because we've seen your intellect. So why don't you tell us your real motives if you ever hear this message? And if not, don't worry about it. Thank you all for listening. Black Heart, Black Mind, Black Out, Aslam Alaikum. And now you know why I say black heterosexual, non-select male power just because they don't like it and black patriarchy till extinction or judgment day.